One of Greater Cleveland's suburban areas, Shaker Heights, is filled with your average middle and upper class residents. I took it upon myself to figure out whether the residents of Shaker Heights actually felt that government assistance was helping or hindering U.S. citizens. Most believe they did. Some didn't. Some focused more on the stereotypical acts of government assistance and some did not. While doing research for this video, I found out from a news report that said government assistance isn't actually going up to its full potential, saying that the government could use billions of more dollars to help the average American family instead of doing the bare minimum for them. People such as Barbara Lee once did a survey that showed that 60% of the American people felt that government assistance was working. While watching this video, question yourself whether you think government assistance actually helps or hinders the U.S. citizens. Okay. My first question is, do you think that government assistance helps or hinders U.S. citizens? I think for the most part it helps. Um, I know my personal experience has been that it helps. My second one is, why do you think there's a huge dislike from non-government? People who have never been poor and desperate don't understand that the people who are on assistance don't want to be, the vast majority of them at least, sure. and that it's hard to even admit that you need it, much less to be on it for a long time, mm -hmm. and anyone who thinks that, you know, I think that there's a misconception that people are lazy, but a lot of the people who are on assistance are working full time or more than one job. Mm -hmm. Um, like I know that probably the roughest time when I was a kid, my mom was working two jobs, mm -hmm. attending school, and was a single mother of two kids, and then she got cancer. We needed the assistance. Mm -hmm. Like there was no other way to make that work. Yeah. Okay, and my last question is, do you think that it's wrong when the government takes away benefits and money for people who get better jobs? Not like, you know, your white collar jobs, but like jobs that help them get along even more than yeah. before. There, there can be a double-edged sword if, like, say, sliding scales or things like that aren't applied well, mm -hmm. and if people don't really think about like the math and logic of it, that it can be a double-edged sword where it's cheaper to not work or it's cheaper to keep making very little money, which is why so many people end up taking like cash jobs or working under the table because then they don't have to report that money. Because, um, like, for instance, in the documentary. Um, uh, waging a living, there's a, there's a woman in it who gets a raise, and basically for every dollar more she's making, she loses two dollars in benefits. Like she would have been better off in terms of paying for her kids' daycare and paying her rent and everything, not getting the raise, unless the raise is really big. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really help her. Thank you. When you look up what welfare is, you get T-A-N-F, which means Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. It is for low-income families with children while they strive to become self-sufficient. The program's goal is to reduce the number of families living in poverty through employment and community resources. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing that caught me with this definition that it says through employment, um, I remember when I watched the movie Bowling for Columbine, this lady who was driving an hour plus to work just to support her family, was working two to three jobs, and the more money she made, the more they took away from her welfare, and that the only reason why they employed her was that she would have to travel, like, hours away from her children. Now, if you want someone to eventually get off welfare or not need it as much, why take money away when it's actually helping them out? Like, why do you think that the... The government takes money away from people as they gradually get a little more money to support themselves. Well, I think as well for being an overall system, I think it's an amazing system proposed by the government. And I think it's a great way to help people. But as a long-term thing, it's not effective that well. When you say that it takes money away from people, I think it's a systematic um, way of keeping people down in a way of keeping them working, Keep having people have to work and work and work, having them never have a chance to build up a type of success so they can get out of that po poverty and need for welfare. I think it takes away a kind of way for them to, you gonna cut this out, um, 
think it takes away kind of a chance for them to grow, to build, to make more for themselves and their family. I think that overall welfare is a good idea, but in the long term it just doesn't work. Why do you think so many landlords don't wish to take in Section 8 housing? I really think it's mostly because of the social connotation, because when you think Section 8, you think like main negative things like the ghetto fabulous queen and like welfare checks and all that. You think like gangster fab gangster delicious and his fabulous struggle mansion with his like like and his pack of thugs. Like it has a very bad connotation. I'm not saying that it was intended for that, but that's just the fact that section eight you think ghetto ghetto paradise. <laughs> and many of the and that's many of the one of the main reasons why landlords won't take section eight housing in. Is it right? I'm not gonna say it is, but I can understand their reasoning behind it. Cause at the end of the day, they're trying to make their own profit in business, and to have something with a negative connotation could damage their reputation as a landlord. Okay. I'm not saying it's right, but that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. Do you think that landlords should have the option whether to accept sex nate or deny it? Um. To me, they should, but they should actually give a reason as to why. Like, I can understand if it was like poor conditions of the housing itself, or like the land, or like the tenants are like very have had a reputation of being loud or rambunctious, or like they have a negative connotation to them. They can choose who or which they can't. But just because it's like, hey, this guy's black, I like black people. You can't just say it like that. Mm -hmm. Like there has to be a, an actually economic or social reason behind it. Why do you think people who don't need Section 8 look down upon a Section 8? Do you think it's more of a, my money's going towards this person to get this type of benefit or just because of the stereotype that goes along with Section 8 housing people? I believe it's a little bit of both because to me, like, that connotation is like deep rooted in there. And if you want to support those people and they don't really do anything, like, which is another stereotype, you, it's sort of like you're watching your money burn from like that. Do you think that every store should accept food stamps? Yes. I feel like, why not? Like, you're going to get way more business. I mean, and stores be acting like, you know what I'm saying, they don't get nothing from accepting the food stamps. They get a, I'm sure they get a cut out of it. I mean, they're accepting it like it's money. You know what I'm saying? Right. I know Dave's, they accept food stamps. I don't know about Heinen's. No. Maybe Heinen should do it, though. I mean... Since y'all like to go to Heinen so much, I know a lot of people live over here by the Van Aken Plaza, but yeah, man. Yes. All right. It should. Okay. Why do you think people become upset at, like, when they see other people in the store using food stamps? Why do you think people who don't use it get upset at people who do use it? Like, especially if it's helping them to, like, get by every day. And she usually buy things like ramen noodles and, like, kind of junk food for her and her kids. And she says she do it because even though it's junky, it, it spreads a little longer because it's cheaper, and plus the the really really good stuff is really expensive. And like you can't really waste your full month of food stamps on the the expensive stuff. Why why you think? Do you think that not even, not so much of the government, but like manufacturers should like cut down on their prices so people who do have to use food stamps can afford that with their cars so they can nope. eat. Nope. Nope. I'm gonna tell you why I say no. I say no because people act like. It's not a Aldi down the street or, you know what I'm saying, to save a lot down the street or something like that. If you want some name brand, you have to pay name brand price like everybody else. If you want to make stuff last, like you want to get quantity over quality, it's a bunch of stores that you can get a whole bunch of stuff for still the low. But it still will be better than the stuff people like to get. Like, I don't get it. Like... What do you think about government assistance? Government assistance. Okay. So I think that it's beneficial for people who need it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a product of it. I grew up, my mother would receive government assistance when I was a child. Um, she needed it uh, during that time period. So I'll say this to give you a short answer so I'm not too verbose here. Government assistance is beneficial for people who need it, keyword need, uh, and should be available for anyone. Um, when you have people that abuse it, that's when it becomes a problem. Um, and typically need, I'm saying loss of job, divorce, 
you know, death of someone who's the primary wage owner, uh, things of that nature, some type of life event that places someone in the position where they need it. But those who don't, meaning make enough money to sustain themselves and their family uh, and things of that nature, no, they uh, should not have access to it. Do you think when the government takes away money from people who are on welfare when they get a job, well, when they have a job that gives them a little more money, do you think it's beneficial? Do you think it's I'm trying to train them to live without it? Or are, do you think it's just them trying to like keep them down in the system? Well, I think it's, it's a little bit of the first two comments that you made. So the question is, and just so that I'm going to paraphrase it just so that I can make sure I understood you correctly. If someone who receives assistance, that person gets a job, and then now the government takes that away. Mm. I think that that is valid, pending if the, the income of the person is able to sustain themselves or their family. So, for example, I'm just going to throw some random numbers at you. Let's say a person is on public assistance, gets a great job, and they're making you know, $50,000 a year. Uh, well, that person no longer needs that public assistance because at that salary range, they should be able to manage their lifestyle and you know their their bills and things of that nature with the family uh, and live within their means. Now, I don't think it's fair for somebody who, let's say, they get a job and they make, let's say, five to ten bucks an hour, and they have a large family. And obviously, I don't think that the, the funds should be pulled because they still need that, that income. So I think it really should be based on the income of the person and the amount of assistance that they're getting. So, or, or, we could, or they could do it this way. If the person is making a decent money, but yet they still don't fall within the range of the family-based ratio that the government has set, then they should allow those funds to continue but check back with that family and say, okay, hey, where are you now? What's your income status now? Have you, are you above where we, that median is? And if so, great, let's pull those funds. If not, then we'll continue to help you until you get there. 